Massive volatility has exploded in Bitcoin overnight, going from 28,000 up to 30,000, getting dumped back down a few hours later to 27,000. And now we see ourselves back above the critical resistance level of $29,000. But how long is this going to last and what we should look out for if this pump fails? Along with this, we're also seeing cryptocurrencies getting dumped yet again. Maybe your USD values are going up, but unfortunately, the facts remain that the BTC values continue to get crushed. This is characteristic of a bull market. Now, I want to show you what that means in the charts and, of course, what's going on in the US as well. So make sure you have liked, subscribed, bell notification icon. If you haven't already, top of the video description, you guys would have received your free crypto and economic report that went out last night. So go and check your emails. That stuff is coming up. And also, we've got massive trading results coming in from our members, hundreds of a percent return. So congratulations to you guys who are really killing the game. If you want to know more about that, go and check out Michael's channel. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. But for now, let's get on with the analysis of what has happened over the last 24 hours and uh, moving this into our macro picture for the stock markets, the worldwide markets, because that is going to lead us to understanding what is going on in cryptocurrencies. Okay, so over the last 24 hours, the US market has fallen another 0.58%. So we had a peak on the 18th of April, and we are now down to the low of 3%, and the market is now closing at 2.7% down. Remember, this is still within the cautiously confident zone as we remain above 50%, 4,020 points. So that's our 50% level short term right now. The yellow line here is at 4060. So these levels are pretty key support levels for the S&P 500. Following uh, these moves, if it does break down, then our really critical support levels are at 3800. You can see here 3840 and 3855, basically dead on that banking crisis low, which is dead on the 50% level of this entire range from the current cycle low to that February top. This is the key area that the market has been trading in for over a year now. You can see there's 366 days. If I take it back to the tops here in late April, early May, you can see we've been in this range of 4,300 points down to 3,500 points. And one could argue that we could move this right over to uh, this point here in early May. So that brings us down to about 350 days. So a couple of weeks short of a full year trading in this zone. But if we'd listen to the news headlines and all of the analysis that is going on telling us that the markets are going to collapse with banks going down, with more money in printing, with less money printing, with anything that is getting thrown at us in the news headlines, you would think that this market would have fallen out of bed by now. One year in a trading range, pretty good going so far. We're not out of here yet, but I remain cautiously confident while we look to put in a correction before potentially some higher prices later in the quarter or probably quarter three. So we still have plenty of time here, especially with these lows holding up. That leads us to the market sentiment. So what's going on? It looks like we definitely need a reset on the market sentiment in the stock market and cryptocurrencies. We're seeing that in crypto, as we've just fallen to 52 and 50 points on the fear and greed index here. Now, the upside is that we are starting to reverse that again. Personally, I think it's a little too early to push to new highs, which if it was to happen, would mean that we would get a more severe correction later. It's just a balancing act of the emotions in the market. And right now, I don't think we have remained at these levels for much uh, enough time to reset the pricing structure of the uh, of BTC and of course the stock market at this point. However, I don't control the market. I just analyze what's going on in terms of the facts on the charts and the data that's given to us. So at the moment, we're heading back up. The greed is creeping in again at 59 points. Although this is the fear and greed index, the greed is increasing. We're still seeing cryptos drop against their BTC values. And if Ethereum remains as strong as it is, you're also going to see many of the cryptos drop against their ETH value. Like you can see here, Matic is losing ground against ETH and Bitcoin, but of course it's holding up on its dollar value. That's because Bitcoin is going up. All that this means is that the altcoins in one's portfolio 
are not going up as much as Bitcoin. Therefore, it's more risk holding the altcoins for a longer term, adding altcoins to a bag and hoping that they go up in the next three months, six months, 12 months is higher risk based on the data that the market continues to give us day after day after day. Now we see this with the Bitcoin dominance going from the 2022 USD cycle low. So this is where all of the prices came down basically to that low point. Now we've seen the dominance take over and push towards around that 49% of the total cryptocurrency market cap. This includes stable coins. So you've got to take that into account as well. Without stable coins, we're somewhere above 50%. But for now, what we're looking at is a stellar bull market for Bitcoin dominance. It has had a slight rejection here at around 48.5%. But of course, that has been the resistance zone for nearly the last two years, going all the way back to the 2021 bear market when Bitcoin climbed out of that. So what can we expect to happen next? What does this mean? Why is it important? Basically, while this is still in an uptrend, you can expect for the majority of altcoins, like you can see here, anything that is an alt labeled alt BTC or alt ETH in this case, but we'll stick to BTC, you can expect these to decline, decline against Bitcoin value. Basically, Bitcoin is going up faster than the altcoin. So it depends on the investor. Do they want to take more risk in the hopes that their altcoin does pump? Like we've talked about plenty of times before, looking at the last two cycles now, which I've been through, altcoins from previous cycles typically don't make it. There might be the odd few. If you want to take that gamble, go ahead. Last cycle, we had thousands of altcoins. We had 20,000 in the 2021. We had a few thousand in the 2017 markets, and most of those did not make it. So take your gambles if you wish. If you do wish to gamble, I highly suggest getting on board with TIA Premium. This price is going up. So if you want to understand more about uh, trading and investing, links are in the top of the video description here. We've also got limited specials here with free USDT. You can see the profits that many of our members are making by following strict mechanical plans, stuff that we go over in our membership in Discord. And I'll leave a link to Michael's channel in the comments as well, who goes through the short-term trading. So with that in mind, where we currently sit with Bitcoin dominance is that it looks like, at least in the short to medium term, is trying to break out of this resistance, which would then mean that you would see further declines on alt BTC values. Great for trading. You make some money on the USD values, but if it's a longer term hold, they are going to decline based on the data here, based on the objective data from the charts and historic data from the, all of the previous cycles. Altcoins are riskier than Bitcoin. Therefore, most people don't want to be holding them while Bitcoin is actually going up. I recently posted about this on Twitter. In the last 30 days, Bitcoin has only spent one minute, barely a minute, underneath $27,000. Remember, there are a lot of people hoping and waiting for prices to go under 25K. For whatever reason, they're listening to other analysis, they're doing their own thing. Don't just listen to me, go and question it, of course, but don't be stupid. Don't think that the market has to go under 20K. We see and have plenty of uh, significant reasons why the market's not gonna go under 20K. 25 might be a possibility, but like I've pointed out here, 25K is still a possibility, but the analysis says 20K is far more unlikely. Nothing is impossible in trading and investing, but it's far more unlikely and it's setting up the hopefuls for failure. So if you're sort of sitting there hoping and waiting for the market, for BTC to go underneath the $25 or $20,000 level, then you're probably setting yourself up for failure with what is actually going on in the market, with what the buyers are actually doing. We saw the recent explosive volatility going down to 27, up to 30, and back down to 28, then back up to where we sit now at 29.3. But it's far less likely to see Bitcoin go back under quite a significant low. This low was formed on extreme news. I go back and point this out time and time again because of how extremely important this low is to the market. It's extremely important to Bitcoin. It's extremely important to the stock markets. The S&P has a very significant low here. And this is something that we were pointing out months in advance based on historic data for the markets over 100 years. So it's basically just going back and doing the back testing in these markets. The markets have proven time and time again that very significant lows are formed in October for the stock market for cycles and March. And so if we're trying to go against these 
lows in the market, the historic data over 100 years, you're basically just ignoring the probabilities of the market and hoping for the best. The market has said October and March are very high probability lows. June is also another one of those times. And all we have to do is just go back even to the last 20 year cycle. This is for uh, the Dow Jones, it's for the S&P, it's for the NASDAQ. And the 20 year cycle here in 2002 to 2003, very significant low was actually the cycle low for the Dow Jones and the S&P in October of 2002. Then the higher low formed in March of 2003. So an exact 20 year repeat. Now you see the market bounce up from that point, start to put in another higher low. This is through June, but you also got a higher low here in May and then another one here in late March, early April. And then it starts to push higher again and start to take out some of the log downtrends. In the case of this year, we've already started to take out the log downtrends for the Dow Jones and also for the S&P. We've also taken out this downtrend line here and put a new higher low on top of all of those downtrends. So this is a pretty key signal for the future of the bull market, the future of the stock markets moving forward over the next couple of years. So really it's misinformed analysis to believe that the market can just all of a sudden collapse past a very significant low and another low, grind away and then eventually come up over the next six to 12 months. If these lows are to break, the markets are in much bigger trouble and there's no point in even trying to DCA and hope for the best. That would be an absolute fool's game. So going forward from this point, of course, it can still be wrong, but these are critical pivot points for the market and you don't want to see the markets break these and consolidate underneath them. So that's the reasoning why I still think 20K is not going to be broken. Moving forward with what's going on from here, uh, markets at 29,200. This has been that critical box that we did not want to see Bitcoin get into and hold into for too long. Essentially, it would grind away and then try to build another case to break back above. So far, it's had a reasonable close yesterday, just getting above our red line. So we had this red line here, which was the tops of a lot of the candle bodies. And basically, it closed dead on it at 28,426. So getting above that 28,400 for a daily close not a bad sign so far. For now, the volatility just seems a little bit too irrational. Should we break higher? Obviously great for the bulls, but eventually the move does come to an end and we just get a longer grind to the sideways, finding another area for the market to consolidate. Remember, we've looked at this in multiple uh, bear markets in the past. You can see through 2015 and 2016, the market can break out and then go on little runs in between. This took about six months for the market to break out, churn sideways, and then eventually break out again. But if we are in the midst of something like what happened in 2015, 2016, then we could potentially expect another six months trading within these particular ranges, going for about four to six months. We've already done approximately a month, a month and a half, so let's see how it continues to play out from this point forward. And all that's going to do is eventually squeeze out the bears, all of the bears that are thinking that 20K is going to get broken or 22 is going to get broken and their missed opportunity. They're going to be able to refill their bags again, maybe even the 25s. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves at this point because the volatility has increased. We're seeing cryptos drop against their BTC values. And what we would need to see next is some more closes above the $29,000 level, which is a key 50%. And it's above all of the previous highs. Once Bitcoin can close above the $29,000 level, then the probabilities reduce for the dump. It could potentially mean that the dump is over and we're going through one of those sideways accumulation periods possibly getting a little bit boring out there. However, during the boring, plenty of profits are being made, especially by guys who are following a strict mechanical plan like we teach over in TIA Premium. This price is going up. So if you want to jump on board before that price increase, go and check out the newsletter. There is a discount there. Signing up to the newsletter will get you a discount for TIA Premium. So check that out. Plenty going on over in our Discord community with traders making hundreds of a percent. I'll update you guys again with how all of our traders are doing in the near future. Until then, like and subscribe. Pay attention to the $29,000 level on BTC. 
and the support levels coming in for the S&P 500. This is going to be the clues to what is happening moving forward in the economy, the real estate cycle, stock markets, and of course, Bitcoin and crypto. See you at the next video. Until then, have a good one and peace out.